So I've only sang Amazing Grace about 10,000 times in my life. And I missed it on that one. And I always know because all of my kids look at me. And one of them even said, Dad, people were even laughing around you. So I know who was around me, all right? Oh, my word. Ain't easy being me, Monty. It wasn't you either? Uh huh. I, I believe that, actually. So, with our new sermon series, the aim is to examine many avenues by which God chooses to speak. We're going to look at everything from the people that he surrounds us with, uh, because folks are speaking into your life. We're going to look at um, our circumstances, whether we're high on the mountain or low in the valley, God uses those circumstances to certainly speak into our life. And and in this series, we're even going to look at dreams. Now, I'm telling you, in 23 years of preaching, I don't I don't believe that I have ever broached the subject of dreams, but it's in here. And and God can even use dreams to speak to us. So we're going to look at that, but but needing to first lay a foundation, the challenge last week was to accept that God does not always speak with the tone we might think. Rather than shatter rocks with a booming voice, rather than then yell down commands from on high, Scripture indicates that our Lord's preference is to reach out with a a whisper, a still small voice that beckons you and I to lean in. Reason being is that he wants us to draw near. God wants you to draw near. But, If this is how God speaks, the question becomes, what does he say? While the specifics are limitless, of course, in general, in general, his message always emanates from just four words, and that's what we're going to look at this morning. If you would stand with me, please. Turn to our text. It'll be easy to get to because it's at the front of the book. Go to Genesis chapter 1. We'll be reading verses 1 through 3. Everything that God speaks emanates from just four words. Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God. Now, those aren't the four words that I'm speaking about this morning, but I want us to notice those four words, in the beginning, God. You know what, friends? There are a lot of things that I can't explain. There are a lot of things that that don't make sense to my very limited mind. There are a lot of things that have become confusing to me or are confusing as, Lord, I don't understand how could this be, how could that be. And a lot of times, the Lord just takes me back to those four words right there. In the beginning, God. He doesn't ask us to understand everything because it's impossible for you and I to understand everything. But what he does ask of us is that we trust. Now, we can do that. Okay, continuing on. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God said, here they are, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Father, we come to you in prayer this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, and we thank you, Lord, for what you share with us. We thank you for those four words. We thank you for your word. The fact that in the beginning, God, the fact that you don't ask us to understand everything because it's impossible for us to do so, You just simply ask us to trust in the fact that from four words in the beginning, God moving on to 
God said, let there be light. Lord, you're speaking to us. Help us to hear. Help us to hear, Lord. You're not a silent God. You're not a God that doesn't care. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Besides myself, are you trying to draw attention to yourself? Okay. Vic loves when I highlight her in front of 250 of her closest friends. Besides myself, how many here have ever heard the audible voice of God? Now, understand, I'm not asking how many here have ever felt the presence of the Lord. And I'm not asking how many here felt a sense of what the Lord wanted you to do. I am asking how many here have ever heard the audible voice of God? Okay. 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 Now, here's what I'd like. Just, I'm just going to get a couple, but because of the time constraints, I don't want to know the circumstances surrounding it. I just want the quote. What did God say? Can you give me a quote, Miss Chris? Okay, I'm going to use the mic here. He said, submit. Submit. So one word, you heard the audible voice of God, one word. Okay, who else did I see? Miss Terry. Give that to her, please. I want folks to hear this. Just the exact quote. Forgive as I've forgiven you. Forgive as I've forgiven you. Submit, forgive as I've forgiven you. Who else? Gary Schroyer, I know I saw your hand. Start a Bible study. Start a Bible study, okay? That's the exact quote, right? Okay. Who else did I see? Uh, Tom Sisler. What was the exact quote? Is this the way I made you? Is this the way I made you? I'd like to hear that story. Actually, I think I know that one. But again, we can't go into that right now. It's a different sermon. Anyone else got an exact quote for me? Okay, Tim Fernie. It was a question first. Okay. Have I taken care of you before? Yes. Then I'll take care of you if we did. Okay, that's the exact quote. Okay, thanks. For me, three times, first, and many of you have heard it as part of my testimony, first time the exact quote was, if you've got it so good, why are you crying beside your bed? Then three months later, the audible voice was, I want you to prepare for the ministry. And then about 30 seconds after that, because I asked a question then, I said, what? And I said it out loud on top of that parking garage, what? And then he said the exact same thing again. I want you to prepare for the ministry. Exact quotes. Although maybe not audibly, I guarantee everyone here has heard the voice of God. Guarantee everyone here has heard the voice of God. The, the proof lies with the first four words ever recorded. Speaking the universe into existence, let there be light. By this, everything else springs forth. And as such, I want us to consider our ability to speak and hear. We've got five primary senses. This morning, I just want us to focus on two of them, the ability to speak, the ability to hear, and, and given the fact that I am scientifically challenged, okay, it's already been established. In fact, I, got, I still remember my biology teacher in high school. You couldn't do this today, but uh, Dr. Springer gave me a, um, a certificate at the end, the, the year-end awards, and I got the award for the, the Jewel Award for the most energy exerted in producing the less the, the least results, okay? Something to that nature. That was my science award that I got, all right? 
couldn't do that today, but it was fun. But, you know, if we can't laugh at ourselves, we might as well hang it out. And our society's gotten crazy. But scientifically challenged, I want to draw, as we think about these two senses, I want to draw from an article entitled Hearing Range. Okay, it's just a paragraph. It says, the human voice is made up of sound waves traveling through space at 1,125 feet per second. So that's how quick my voice is going right now, 1,125 feet per second. The average male speaks at a frequency of 100 hertz, while the average female speaks at a frequency of 150 hertz. Well, we'll just let that one stand, won't we? <laughs> it goes on to say, though there are the Barry Whites and Celine Dion's who push boundaries, our normal vocal range is between 55 and 880 hertz. We also have a range of hearing, and it's limited to sound waves between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Anything below 20 hertz is infrasonic. Anything above 20,000 hertz is ultrasonic. So with this in mind, from just four words, I submit the first message that God speaks to us. Remember, this morning I'm talking generalities. I submit the first message God speaks to us is one of miracles, but maybe not in a way that we always imagine. Let me give you a for instance. From Isaiah 55, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Now, I like something I came across. Famed composer Leonard Bernstein held that, and I quote, he says, the best translation of the Hebrew in Genesis chapter 1 is not, and God said, but, and God sang. Another example comes from Romans chapter 8. For creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, and hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Friends, understand, this isn't some New Age philosophy that I'm preaching. It's the truth that God is speaking miracles all the time. When Scripture tells of mountains singing, trees clapping, and creation groaning, it's not just metaphorical. As one of my commentaries uh, notes, and I think I might have put in your outline, yeah, it, I did. The, the world of nature, designed by God, often furnishes illustrations of truth. We just don't always detect it. Again, referring to the range of hearing, science proves that below our range, uh, infrasound, so again, that's less than 20 hertz. Infrasound has the capacity to cause headaches and earthquakes. Remember the creation groaning. And we can't hear these things. Infrasound is, is below our range. It's the way elephants predict changes in weather. It's the way birds migrate. And it's how we locate underground oil. And quite honestly, as we talked about the monarch butterfly this morning, the, I mean, it went so much with the message. I mean, I venture to say, because the question was, how does the monarch know how to get to these certain spots in, in Mexico and the Yucatan and, and so on and so forth? It would have to be by way of this infrasound, less than 20 hertz. And by way of ultrasound, which is above 20,000 hertz. So remember, again, this is beyond our range of hearing. Below 20 is beyond our range. Above 20,000 is above our range. And with ultrasound, we're able to track submarines, pasteurized milk, break up kidney stones, 
and were able to see unborn babies through sonograms. Friends, the point is that if our range of hearing, if our range of hearing were a little bit better, we would discern how prevalent the voice of God really is. Remember, just because we can't detect a sound doesn't mean that it isn't there. To each of us, through four words, let there be light. God speaks miracles. And friends, he also speaks love. Matthew chapter 3, which is a passage, a number of folks that I've been meeting with regarding baptism, we've gone over this passage. It reads, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Now remember, just as a side note, the Lord didn't need to be baptized, okay? Jesus was perfect. He was without sin, but this was an opportunity for him to identify with us, and so we would get an opportunity to later identify with him, but the passage reads, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God, the same Spirit of God that was there at the beginning in Genesis 1 that we read, He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, which means landing on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Pastor, do you believe that this really took place 2,000 years ago? I absolutely, absolutely believe it. Stake my very existence. Every ounce of my being, I stake on the fact that this happened. Here's the thing, a lot of folks have trouble believing that God is love. I mean, we find it in Scripture, right there, 1 John 4, 8, it says that. It doesn't say love is God, it it says God is love. Now, of course, society, we've twisted that today, we've turned it all around, and and, and, and we like to go love as God or lust as God, and, and we put love and lust all the way up in the number one position. That's not what it says. It says God is love. But a lot of folks have trouble believing this. And oftentimes the reason is, is that someone has misrepresented the Lord in a certain fashion. They've represented Christ in poor fashion. And so, friends, the reminder is is that you have school mates, classmates, you have co-workers, you have family members, and I know that it's hard for you and I to believe this or to comprehend, or, or perhaps it's been a while since we've thought about it, we've forgotten this, but remember, you've got a lot of folks in your life that you're the only Jesus that they see. You're the only Jesus. You, you, Christian, are the only Jesus they see. You're the only Bible that they ever read. And so it does matter how you and I live. It matters how you and I represent the Lord before others. Because there are folks out in this world, and we brought it up again in Sunday school, I... Friends, if you're not part of Sunday school class, please be a part because you're missing out. There are so many valuable things that are part of our Sunday school classes. As someone pointed out, that there's a lot of Christians, you know what, they just get ugly and they can get mean. And folks are like, I don't want anything to do with with the Lord like that because we're the only ones that they see of, of Jesus. And so folks have gotten turned away from this God is love. If this is you, and it's possible, because I still believe that there are folks in this world that they have difficulties with this, but, but I always promised the Lord one thing. I said, Lord, if it, always get, if it, all, if it ever gets too bad, I'll, ev- I'll always give you the last chance. I, I made that, that promise to the Lord a long time ago, and so I think it's possible that there are times that folks give the Lord a last chance, and, and they feel like, how can God be loved? And, and they can still come to church. If this is you, if you can identify, please. God speaks about you. God speaks about you. Just as he spoke about his own child at baptism. You are 
his beloved. Oh, pastor, but if you only knew the things that I've done, if you only know the way that I've lived my life, I don't even need to hear about it. If you only knew the way I lived my life, if you only know the words I used, if you only know the habits that I kept, then you wouldn't be so worried about your own. You are his beloved. And the fact is, is not only have we heard the Lord, here's something, we've actually responded to him. And I could offer a number of different examples, but the easiest one, the one most readily available, is the fact that we're even here. Now, some folks might say, well, yeah, but my, for, my, my parents forced me to be here. And you know what I would say? I would say, thank God for parents that forced you to come to church. We need more parents that force their kids to come to church because the world ain't getting easier. And, and some might say, well, you know, I'm here because grandma guilted me into it. You know, I mean, everybody wants to please grandma. I, I get that. I didn't go to church growing up, but the few times I did, sometimes it was because of grandma, all right, because I know they would make a difference to her. Because Grandma Parsons, she had the picture of the, the, the Jesus velvet picture on her wall, all right, and so I would go to, to church with Grandma Parsons from time to time. And some here might say, well, you know what? It's really a matter of if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy, and so I need to go to church and then that keeps everything, there's peace in the valley at home. Thank God for a spouse that cares that the, the husband or, or the wife winds up going to service. Here's the thing, friends. No matter how he did it, the fact is, is that God got you in this place. Why? Because he speaks love and he wants you to hear. I am always a firm believer that the Lord knows every single Sunday. When I look at faces, people that are here, I am a firm believer that God knew you were going to be here today. That doesn't take away your free will or any bit of that. Because I'm a believer in free will. But I believe God being all-knowing, he knew exactly who was going to be here. He knew how it is that you were going to be here. And he knew this morning that I was going to tell you, he loves you. You can't run far enough away from him. He's going to chase after you. And all we need to do is stop and turn around. And we'll see that his arms are open wide. And all we need to do is look at his hand and recognize that he's not pointing us to stay down. But rather his hand's extended to us. If only we'll grab hold of it and stand back up. God knows that you're going to hear that this morning. Now for me, though I certainly didn't realize it at the time, God spoke love through Jennifer, the only person I knew in high school that lived out her faith. Let me say it again. Remember, because I, I mean, it still astounds me to this day. This was Lawrence Central High School. This is a big 5A high school. How is it, how is it that I only knew one person in that whole entire high school? How did I only know one kid that was living out their faith? If you're a high schooler in here, raise your hand, please. Just raise them high, raise them high. Okay, I want you to see the number of high schoolers right here. Okay, thanks. I appreciate that. It's just a side note. It's just a side note to those of you that are in high school. I only knew one. How do folks see you? Now understand, I knew those that went to church. And I knew those that said this or they said that. But I only knew one who walked it like she talked it. Just one. My prayer is that you were that person, each of you that raised your hand. You see, watching Jennifer made me think that there was something more about the one she followed. And then God spoke love by way of a youth pastor who continued inviting me to church 
continue inviting me to church, continue inviting me to church. And I was into wrestling, at, you know, during high school, it's my favorite sport. And, and, you know, I still, it's been a while since I brought this up, but, but Ben, I, I still remember it, the youth pastor came to my house one time. His name is Dave Blackburn, and, and I call him at least about twice a year, and I thank him for the difference that he made. But, but I'll never forget, and, and I happened to be home that day, and because I had already lied so much about, you know, well, wrestling and this and that, and I just can't go. And, and the youth pastor came, and he had another of the kids from the youth group with him, and they were coming up my walk, and here's what I did. I leaned down below the window. Because cause I was afraid that he was going to look at it like, I know you're in there, you know. And so I hid below the window. But God spoke love to me by way of that youth pastor that kept inviting me. And then he kept in touch with me when I was in the military living a very unholy life. And then God spoke love through a sidewalk preacher named Dan watching him stand strong through all the incessant ridicule that a lot of those college kids threw at him, by Preacher Dan's example, I finally decided that it was time to love God back. What about you? How is God speaking love? And how are you responding? In closing, from his book, A Mile Wide, Brandon Harmaker shares of his first trip to Ethiopia. Uh, the purpose of going to Ethiopia was to work alongside his friend, Brian Fitch. Brian Fitch is the um, founder of an organization called Eden Projects. Eden Projects. And, and what their ministry is, is that in Ethiopia... Some of you are aware of this, some of you are not, but there's been what we might classify as generational deforestation. So that means through a number of generations in Ethiopia, the, the people have just cut down the trees. And the next generation has cut down the trees, they've cut down the trees until they have left all this barren land. Okay? And so Eden Project, their ministry is to work toward the goal of planting, get this, 100 million trees. Now, they're not tree huggers, okay? Don't, don't get me wrong. That's not what they are. But what they are is, it, is people that says, this is the Lord's creation. And we haven't done right by what God has given us. And so our ministry is to work towards planting 100 million trees. Now, as, as Brandon writes, by the time he boarded the plane... He was severely questioning his decision to go, in addition to his fear of flying uh, and leaving his family, he doubted that he would make any difference. Now, I wonder how many here have ever been in that spot, and maybe you're in that spot right now. You wonder if you make any difference. You absolutely make a difference. God has a plan for your life, and he loves you. Brian, or Brandon wondered if he made any of difference at all and, and feeling bad about his attitude, and we all get in that. We stinking thinking. You know, we have this crummy attitude, and, and Brandon had that crummy attitude as he boarded the plane, and it was so crummy, in fact, that he recorded basically what he prayed as the, as the plane took off. He prayed, God, I'm sorry. I'm trying, but I just don't get it. I don't want to be on this plane. I feel like I'm wasting time, and I feel like I'm wasting money. If this is important to you, please overcome my ignorance, my doubt, and my blindness. Please connect the dots and show me what I'm missing. Amen. Immediately upon opening his eyes, from that prayer, the man seated next to Brandon, a man described to be probably in his 30s, somewhere in his mid-30s, and he was from Ethiopia, immediately after Brandon prayed that, basically asking to hear the voice of God, 
asking for the Lord to connect the dots. Some of you may be asking for the Lord to connect the dots in your own life this morning. As soon as he got done with that prayer and he opened his eyes, the 30-something-year-old Ethiopian man next to him turned and he asked why it was. He asked Brandon why it was that he was going to Ethiopia. And by this time, Brandon was just worn out with his own thoughts. And so he turned to the man and he kind of gave just a little bit of a grin. And he said, I'm going to plant trees. And with that, the woman two seats over began sobbing. And she began sobbing loudly. Brandon wasn't sure what was going on. And the man seated next to him was talking to the woman. And he eventually turned to Brandon and he explained to him, he said, this is my mother. And I want you to know that for 38 years, she has prayed that God would send someone to Ethiopia to help, to help with bringing God's creation back to where he intended it to be. And he explained further, he said, you have to understand, for many, many years, my mother has watched the trees be cut down, the ground turned to a dust bowl, crops no longer able to be planted there, the wildlife has taken off, and she has watched for years after years after years her friends and her neighbors die needlessly. And so she has prayed for 38 years that God would send someone to help undo the mess that they've made. And today you've become the answer to her prayer. Well, not surprisingly, Brandon gained a renewed sense of purpose that day. As he would go on to put it, he said, I then understood that my gospel, my gospel was too small. Well, friends, perhaps that also applies to our understanding of God's voice. Is our sense of hearing big enough to recognize his message of miracles? I mean, seriously, look around. We didn't even talk about the cosmos. I mean, the examples I came across when it comes to the universe, the cosmos, the stars, man, I don't even get that. I couldn't even pretend to explain any of that to you. The monarch butterfly, I get that one. I mean, I, I can see that. And we've also talked about the salmon and the amazing things that go on with that and so many things. Friends, God is speaking all the time. Is our sense of hearing big enough to recognize that not only his message of miracles, is our sense of hearing big enough to recognize his message of love? Just four words. Let's take a look at the challenge this morning. Psalm 29, 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. With God's voice, there really is no need for ears. Pray for eyes to hear his miracles. And pray for a heart to hear his love. You and I don't need the ears. Look around. Because we... We've talked about how God speaks. Remember the whisper, because he wants us to lean in. He wants us to draw near. God wants you to draw, to draw near. No matter what shape you're in, whether you're high on the mountain or low in the valley, God wants you very near. We've talked about that. But this morning, in generalities, we've talked about what exactly is God saying. And we're going to look at the various ways in which he speaks to us in the weeks ahead, and, and it's going to be an interesting series. You're going to be surprised with some of the ways that the Lord is speaking to you. Okay, but, but this morning, the generalities are the miracles. Look around, friends. You know, I've struggled with a lot of things, but, but in fact, I had a privilege of being able to talk with someone yesterday, someone that shared how they were, perhaps they had lost their faith. And, and I said, you know, whenever I've gotten to that spot, I just walk out at night and I look up. I said, someone put it there. And if he's big enough to put that there, then he's big enough to give me a book that tells me the truth. I mean, seriously, the Bible folks get so hung up on, well, we're not sure. 
is your God that small? My God's big enough that if he can hang those stars up there, then he can easily give me a book that tells me the truth. Now, that doesn't mean society's going to like it, because we know society doesn't like it, by and large. That's going to take me in a whole different... Let me just stick to the topic here, all right? Because that's my sweet spot, man. And then it's just, oh, boy. Pray for eyes to hear his miracles, friends. And really, this morning also, pray for a heart to hear his love. Some of you need that reminder today. You need to be reminded that God loves you. You need to be reminded that he knows exactly who you are. He knows who you are. He knows the number of hairs on your head or not on your head. He knows what you're going through. He knows those of you that are in the greatest of times right now. And he says yes, and he, and he derives pleasure from the fact that you derive joy from your life. And he knows those who are deep in the valley and they're questioning things and they're wondering what's going on in their life and they're trying to find direction and they're sad perhaps and nobody else knows. And remember, for me, audibly, I heard him say, if you've got it so good, why are you crying beside your bed? Nobody knew it on the outside. On the outside, everything was squared away, but on the inside, I was so empty and sad. And God knew that. And if that's you, he knows it. And he knew you'd be here this morning and that you would hear me say, the Lord loves you. Don't give up on him. Because I promise you, he's not going to give up on you. Miracles and love. Generalities. Friends, this morning as we close, the reminder is we've got a long way to go with this series. We're going to start looking at avenues be very interesting the way the Lord is speaking into our lives. You, you, you won't want to miss it. But remember the topic this morning. And let's just be a little bit more attentive and recognize that just because I can't hear something doesn't mean it isn't there because God's speaking all around. If you're here this morning and you'd like to use the altar, please feel free to do so. And I'll be up here if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, meaning you've never made an intentional choice to, to follow him, I'll be up at this altar. You come and kneel next to me. Put your hand on my shoulder. I'm going to say, how can I pray for you? And you simply say, I want to follow Jesus. And I'll lead you in a very, um, um, very short but very sincere prayer. I'll lead you. You don't have to worry about it. I know what to pray, and, and you can pray right after me. But friends, the altar's open. Feel free to use it. And let's remember, we don't need ears to hear what God's saying to us. Let's listen to him this morning. was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see Lord that's you and God said let there be light and there was light 
Father, thank you for awakening us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us ears to hear. And that doesn't necessarily mean audibly. Sure, once in a great, great while, a rare exception happens. And someone hears the voice of God, a very specific message. But Lord, for all of us, for all of us, the message of God is out there. All we need to do is we need to listen. You speak to us by way of miracles. Oh, we could talk about medical miracles. Or we could talk about someone's heart being, being turned, the, the cheapest of sinners who does a Saul to Paul conversion. And, and those things are indeed miraculous. But at the very foundation, all we need to do is look up and look around. And we recognize God is speaking all the time. And we need to read your word. Those aren't just metaphors. That's saying that, that creation is indeed alive. It wasn't just by, it wasn't by accident. This was God. God saying, let there be light. And there was light. That's miraculous. And you're speaking. Lord, you're also speaking through love. We're here for a reason this morning. We can't speak for others right now. But Lord, right now, I am praying on behalf of those that are here. There'll be time for others. I believe that. There are folks that didn't come to church today and, and folks that, that haven't thought about you today. There are folks that are at home sleeping off a hangover, all sorts of things. And I remember every bit of that. I was one of those people. And then the day came that I had ears to hear. And Lord, here we are. We've heard you whether we realize it or not. And we've responded. And Father, I've tried to be obedient and share your message this morning that you love them. And I pray that for this congregation, every single one of us, that we will walk out of here knowing that we are your beloved. That we are your beloved. Oh, Father, give us ears to hear. We thank you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Christ's name, amen. Friends, thank you. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Let's listen. Listen for God because he is indeed speaking.